Good afternoon to you. This is Talk the Home of Common Sense. Philip Ingram still with me. Delighted to be joined now by the wonderful Maya Forstatter. She's Chief Executive of Sex Matters to discuss, um, well, a small victory. We have to celebrate these moments. A small victory for common sense when it comes to trans madness. Uh, good afternoon to you, Maya. Hello, Julia. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I mean, there may well be small victories, bigger victories uh, with Donald Trump being elected. I'm sure a man you and I don't hold a candle for but uh, as, as, a, as a human being. But in terms of the trans madness in America, this may well help things. But small victories here in the UK involving a woman called Ros Adams who worked for a rape crisis centre. And uh, J.K. Rowling is among those cheering on what's happened. Tell us what's happened to her. So, uh, Ros... Ros Adams worked at Edinburgh Rape Crisis Centre um, where she learnt when she got there that they said trans women are women and they employed a man who identifies as a woman as the chief executive of the centre. And so she became worried that she couldn't uh, tell users of the centre clearly that there are no men here. Um, and Which is a major issue for women who've been abused, who've been raped that they want to be somewhere they consider a, pl a safe place. Absolutely, and it was advertised as being a service that was by women for women, um, and yet she knew that there was a man who was running the organisation, and also she had colleagues who were um, female but who identified as non-binary, and so they changed their name, or one of them changed her name to, uh, you know, something ambiguous. And um, Roz asked, well, how do I explain to users that they will be seen by women. Uh, you know, a woman yeah. who calls herself they, them, fine. Um, but what the users want to know is, am I going to be seen by a woman? And she was accused of being transphobic. Uh, they, for for they, worrying they, about really, really scared, hurt women who'd been raped. That, I uh, mean, yeah, what they, a horrible person she is. Yes, yeah. And and they said that she, they uh, when people sent emails to the centre to ask about whether they ha they had female staff, those emails were filed under hate. Uh, the, the culture of the place was just not focused on the people that they should be concerned about, which is the women who've been raped. It was focused on the identity of the staff. Uh, and so Roz tried to ask very careful questions about this and she was subject to a heresy hunt and driven out of the organization and now she's won her tribunal and not only has she got financial compensation but the tribunal has just said that Edinburgh Rape Crisis Center needs to apologize to her needs to admit that it discriminated against and harassed her and that nothing that she did was bullying or harassment towards them yeah a proper victory and again a 70,000 pound payout that said the trauma the difficulty that people go through when this happens to them most people don't push the tribunal most people don't get the publicity they don't get that payback um they kind of go away quietly because they don't want a bad reference or or um or, or they just feel the battle is too hard and 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 it's really important that we cheer on those who do who do battle this because this sets a precedent and like your case your employment tribunal case where again you were accused of transphobia and nothing of the sort um just standing up for your right to to have certain beliefs based on you know facts about a man being a man a woman being a woman not being able to change between the two um and it's really important that that is established that that is a protected belief because it's because because we shouldn't need to protect facts from 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 the law but apparently we do these days um jk rowling has cheered this on i mean i believe that rose adams now actually continues her fantastic work helping women in this in crisis uh, w working for a, a center set up by jk rowling because she wanted to make sure that women did have a safe place to go but it is so extraordinary that in so many of the so-called sort of caring you know charities and the nhs and in schools and, and and all these charities and all these bodies that that protects that they care so much about people and yet they'll put the needs of a man who wants to identify as a woman above the needs of people who are genuinely genuinely vulnerable and in distress yes i i think they've they've got a completely wrong idea of what it means to be inclusive um they've become so focused on the idea that they need to include men who identify as women that they're not thinking about what's the impact of this on women children <laughs> girls uh yeah. you know female athletes it, it, depending on what the what the organization is um th those people seemingly don't matter and the only thing that matters is the feelings of men who identify as women yeah it is just extraordinary again we'll take these small victories as they come um i'm certainly hope that a little bit of the crackdown on the woke madness in america could trickle down here are you hopeful 
Um, yes, I'm, I'm hopeful. I think, uh, you know, what the US election showed was that people on all sides uh, disagree with disagree with this um, and want to see children protected and want to see women's rights protected. Yeah, absolutely. My Forstetter from Sex Matters, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Appreciate that. Uh,